Hi friends, how are you? Hope you all are fine. In the previous week, we have seen about what news is, how we can cover the news, what are the types of reporting and roles, responsibilities and qualities of a reporter. We have understood that news sense, clarity, objectivity, accuracy, alertness, speed, calmness, curiosity, skepticism, punctuality, patience, imagination, foresightedness, self-discipline, integrity, fearlessness and frankness, tactfulness, initiative, mobility, diligent, determined, good general knowledge, responsibility and fairness, highly competitive, hardworking, power to make the right questions, maintain code or conduct, self-editing, correction and criticism power and capable to work with others and irregular as are the important qualities of a reporter. Tamil patriotic poet Subramaniya Bharati's lines are Acha millai, acha millai, acha min badillaye It jahatthi lullor ellam edirthu nindra podilum Acha millai, acha millai, acha min badillaye The translation of the lines are I have no fear, I have no fear There is not even a speck of fear in me even if every human in this world stand up against me, I have no fear, I have no fear. There is not even a speck of fear in me. Yes, the reporter also should have the courage and boldness. He should be brave and not to fear to anybody while telling the truth. Dr. Mary Dowd adds some more qualities of a good newspaper journalist. They are courage and boldness, expert communication skills, knowledge of technology and investigative skills. Good journalists push themselves to dig deeper and ask tough questions. They put personal feelings aside to boldly unhear the truth about newsworthy people, places and events. Courage is vital to investigating what is happening at the scene. They are not satisfied making phone calls from a comfortable desk in the newsroom when covering major happenings. For example, newspaper journalists may travel to the scene of dangerous floodwaters in their community and talk to volunteers who are helping sandbag a faltering dam. Along with impeccable character, newspaper journalists must be skilled communicators to interview sources and write in-depth stories. Unlike radio, television or online journalists, they go far beyond soundbite and superficial coverage of a situation. Newspaper journalists include background information and needed detail to give context to a more nuanced understanding of the issue by the reader. Typically, journalists have a bachelor's degree in communication or journalism and relevant undergraduate experience such as writing for their college newspaper. You must be highly proficient in English grammar, technical writing and proper attribution of sources to be a good newspaper journalist and not lose your job. As part of their job, newspaper journalists follow and use social media appropriately to provide immediate and transparent coverage of happening events. They know how to use the internet to research stories and access public records when engaging in investigative journalism. Technology such as Facebook and LinkedIn help them contact potential sources to request information or an interview. They also maximize use of technology to instantly inform the public about matters that may directly affect their health and safety such as a food recall. Good newspaper journalists have an analytical mind and base stories on evidence and facts, not emotion. They are astute observers and instinctively sense when there is much more to a story than what is being shared at a news conference is an example. Critical thinking skills are crucial when weighing conflicting accounts of an incident and assessing the credibility of sources. They exercise sound judgment when blogging 
or writing it and verified information on the newspaper's website during a breaking story. Even when faced with looming deadlines, good newspaper journalists take time to get a balanced accounting of the subject. It is not going to be easy that establish one's as an efficient reporter. It requires a lot of hard work and effort. It is achievable thought. Just don't give up and take advantage of any opportunity that comes one's way. He must not express his own views in what he writes. He must know in most sets of circumstances, but everything he writes must express his mind and its condition. He holds up a mirror and how much clouded or clear it is depends on the truth or a twist of the truth which he makes in accordance with his nature and mental equipment. A reporter's mind is like a sponge paying a good deal of attention to purely mundane things but learning something every day and cleaning his mind of matters not up to the mark. He must organize his knowledge and codify it. He must understand the principles of government in general and in some details. He must know generally history, particularly the history of his area. Though he can pick up these things as he goes along his duty, it is better for him to supplement his knowledge by a planned study. Okay, fine. We know that news reporters or correspondents gather information, prepare stories and publish the stories. Including this, we know about the types of reporting. Shall I recall now? Crime reporting, fires, homicides, accidents, arrest, accusations, confessions, court reporting, health reporting, civic reporting, political reporting, culture reporting, civil administration reporting, and education reporting. We have seen the types of reporting briefly in the previous week. In today's class, we will learn in detail about beat reporting, crime reporting and court reporting. All beats require background, understanding of the subject and constant touch with the subject and sources. This is the reason why newspapers allot beats to reporters and correspondents. But in today's world of interdisciplinary approach, beats are not watertight compartments. In fact, for doing a report on an event or an in issue, the reporter has to have the information from many different beats. For example, crime, police, courts, hospitals and jails are different beats. But while dealing with the crime story, often the information has to be gathered from two or more of these beats. Beat reporting is the craft of reporting an issue or particular sector, organization or institution over time. Beat reporters builds up a base of knowledge on and gain familiarity with the sector to provide insight and commentary in addition to reporting straight facts. That distinguishes them from other journalists who might cover similar stories from time to time. Newspapers assign a reporter to cover it on a regular basis for satisfy enough news and reader's interest. Traditional beats are like police department, courts, schools and city hall. Certain issue areas such as health, business and environment are also regular beats on most of the newspapers. Beats could also be imagined quite differently. What makes beat a good one for both writer and reader is the variation in levels of analysis. That is, a good beat has stories that can be told with lots of concrete detail but also with broad themes that speak to abstract issues and ideas. Beats are places literally or figuratively where ideas flourish as well as where events happen. A good beat reporter always operates at both the micro level and the macro level of analysis. To paraphrase the old 1960s slogan, you have to think globally, report locally. Now we can see about crime reporting. 
there are tremendous public interest in crime stories and no newspapers can afford to ignore them without damage to circulation and credibility. Crime is a part of life and it is newspaper's duty to inform the readers of what crimes are going on in their city, state or country. However, crime reporting should not aim at satisfying morbid curiosity or sensation mongering. Although crime reporting is usually assigned to one of the junior reporters in a newspaper, it is a highly responsible and specialized job. The reporter should not only have the ability to sift the grind from the chaff and the truth from lies, he should also have good contacts in other departments of the administration as well as working knowledge of the penal codes and law on libel and other relevant matters. Besides, he must observe a code of honor. He should be as objective and as humanity as possible so as to avoid resorting to sensationalism or cheap gimmicks to catch the attention of the readers or the viewers. He should not suppress news of public interest, nor should he seek to settle personal scores with police officers or lawyers or judges. And he must be careful that in the course of his work, he does not unnecessarily invade a citizen's privacy. There has been much criticism of press reporting of crime and not all of it is baseless. Some reporters have been much pain and sorrow to their victims or their families and friends. Crime reporters try to glorify the activities of criminals or sometimes make heroes of them. This practice should be discouraged as much as a resort of sensationalism. The crime reporter much never violates standards of decency and good news taste. There are several types of crime news. They are murders, fires, accidents, robberies, burglaries, fraud, blackmail, kidnapping, rape, etc. The reporter must get his facts correct about the essential elements of a fire story, the number of persons killed or injured, the extent of a damage to property, the loss of valuables, etc. He must also find out if the fire brigade responded in time or was guilty of delaying the fire operations through sheer lethargy or incompetence or lack of water supply. He should question eyewitnesses about any acts of bravery or cowardice. All these are essential ingredients of a fire story. The lead in a fire story would normally suggest itself. If for instance lives have been lost, it needs highlighting in the lead. If possible, the reporter must list the names of the dead and the injured persons. See, this is an example of reporting on fire. Next we see about homicides or murders. In cases of a major murder, the reporter should rush to the scene as soon as possible after receiving a tip and gather all the relevant facts. The reporter must, in any case, exercise great care in how he handles the story. Otherwise, he runs the risk of causing offence. In reporting dowry deaths or alleged dowry deaths, the reporter must refrain from leveling unconfirmed statements by one party or the other. He must therefore get these facts correct by talking to the investigation police officer, the girl's in-laws and her parents and if possible with the neighbors. See this news. In this news, we can see the details of the death person like his age, his background and his status. Next, the detail collected from the police has been included. The situation was explained in step by step. Then the statement from the victim's PA was added. The statements from the cook, her son and the watchman also included. Here we can see that the reporter has done the investigative journalism job also. Most accidents are reported on the basis of police bulletins or information supplied by police spokesmen. However, wherever 
possible, the crime reporter must rush to the scene of a major accident to give authenticity to this story. It is a serious matter to report that a person who has been placed under arrest. When such a report is made, the exact charge against the arrested person could be given and it should be documented by either a record or attribution to a responsible official. If such documentation cannot be obtained, the reporter has better to check the facts. The person in question may not have been under arrest at all. In many states, an arrest is not formally accomplished until a prisoner is booked. The news in any case must be handled with care. Accusations It is commonly written that someone is being sought for robbery, suspected of arson or tried for murder. This is journalistic shorten which has gained acceptance through usage but it is neither precise nor correct. Persons are sought in connection with a robbery unless a charge has actually been made in which case they are charged with robbery. Persons under suspicion are not necessarily going to be charged with a crime and it is generally not privileged matter to indicate that suspicion is attached to any individual by name. Where the police suspect someone but lack of proof that person may be held as material witness that is far different from being accused of as a criminal. Therefore, cases of suspicion are not usually given too extensive and detailed news treatment if no privileged material is available for use. The practice of reporting that a defendant is being tried for murder while widely used is obviously prejudicial and could be more accurately if less drama stated as being tried as a charge of murder. See this crime reporting news. Next we can see about confessions. The use of the word confession to describe statements made by a person to the police or the prosecuting authorities is dangerous when it is not a matter of public record. The fact that a police chief or a prosecutor has claimed to have a confession except in open court may be used only at the risk of the news organization. Most press bar voluntary agreements forbid the use of confessions until they are admitted in open court. The records are full of supposed confessions that backfire later for a variety of reasons and of persons who admitted crimes they could not possibly have committed. Unless and until it is established in fact that a person has confessed, approved procedure for reporter is to use such term as statement, admission, description or explanation. They convey the shade of meaning that is warranted by circumstances and do not subject the news, organization to unnecessary risks. There are a few fundamental precautions which a crime reporter must take account of. The first is that the police and prosecutors rarely will give them information on a silver platter. That means a tremendous amount of interviewing and research must be done in a very short time so that a coherent story may be written. There is no guarantee of police accuracy and therefore police versions of names, addresses and other facts must be checked. Police and journalistic terminology are not identical. The legal term for us laying is a homicide but many news organizations loosely and incorrectly refer to such crimes automatically as murder. The reporters always get the information from the police department. There is always a system for informing the press about crimes in every major city. But at times, there are efforts to avoid disclosure of crime or delay it for various reasons. If the reporter is active on his beat, he may get information about an incident earlier than others. It is good to check with the concerned information man or the police chief officers about incidents regularly and more than once every day. It is good to be known to the police chief but it is always useful to periodically meet station house officers of different police stations. In this process, 
good relations should also be developed with lawyer staff. It does not take much to build such relations. If a reporter talks to members of lawyer staff politely, whenever he visits the senior officer, he would have done half the job. If he can remember names of some of them and can address them by their names, he has almost won them. Some people may give the reporter useful tips at times which may lead to big news breaks. It is always good to meet various sources in the police setup even when there is no work. Such contacts are helpful when the reporter is on the job and chasing a story. Building contact is building human relationship with people of different walks of life. Even in this world, there are innumerable people who will be prepared to help a good and genuine reporter. Many police officers try to use reporters to get some publicity and they may make false claims. Whenever there is any doubt, the reporter should try to cross-check such claims with other sources in the setup. By experience, the reporter will be able to judge who can be relied upon and to what extent. If you get information from independent sources that relates to crime, it is always better to check it with the police. Sometimes an additional angle may emerge from such cross-checking. Story may carry independent information as well as police version. What happens in police lockups and jails makes news occasionally. If you have good contacts at lower level, you may get tips which may yield good news reports. Some more examples for crime reporting. While we are talking about the crime reporting, we could not omit jails. At jails, also contacts at all possible levels are important. But this is perhaps the most neglected but most talked about beat in India. All important jails can be sources of many human interest stories. Reporters should visit jails and meet employees at various levels to get to know what is happening inside their iron gates. The next we can see about court reporting. Even the big newspapers of India do not have the resources to cover all the courts of their main circulation area. The reason is that there are too many courts. Newspapers neither have the time nor the space to cover everything that happens in the courts. Paper covers only those stories in which their readers are interested. A country governed by laws needs many courts each with the different jurisdictions. The emphasis of the news media is on criminal courts, high courts and the supreme court. The media are less interested in covering civil courts. One of the reasons for this lack of interest may be that the civil courts are jammed with cases, the shoots remain pending there for several years and it is assumed that in the meantime members of the public would lose whatever interest they may have showed initially. If we go through the whole files of a newspaper, we will find that the volume of court reporting has increased in recent years. One of the reasons for the increase may be the courts are now getting more active in the field of social justice. Public interest proceedings are also increasing. As the number of petition increase, one notices a corresponding increase in the coverage of the courts and the judgments they deliver. There are only a few big newspapers in India who have full-time correspondents or reporters exclusively for their court beat. These reporters generally have adequate legal background. Other newspapers mostly hire stringers to cover court stories. I hope from today's session you got some idea about beat reporting, crime reporting and court reporting. In the next class, we will learn about other types of reporting and how the information will be collected in detail. See you in next class. Have a good day. Bye.